Hi, this is CB, and this time I'm going to talk about getting a little bit less, I guess would be the way of putting it, depth of field, a shallow depth of field in a photo that maybe isn't quite as shallow as you like. I have this layout that I created recently for my Sparkle Princess embellishment set, and this photo in particular for it just didn't quite have as much depth of field as I wanted, and I'll show you the picture here. Get that back here. Now, it still does have some, of course. This was taken with an SLR, and an SLR camera can give you a pretty decent uh, shallow depth of field, which means that the background is more blurred or less in focus rather than the subject is. But it wasn't quite enough. I mean, I added a little bit more to it, and it's subtle, but sometimes subtlety is key, and that's what I want here. So, the first thing I guess to do is sort of look at your picture and analyze what you've got going on here. My subject here is going to be the one that's in focus and she's over here in this corner so this I can add a little bit more blur to but this is closer to the camera and I'm going to need this a little more in focus. So what I'm looking to do is create more blur up in here and keep it a little bit more in focus here and certainly keep her in focus. So the first thing to do is I'm going to copy this layer off control or command plus J now I'm working in Photoshop Elements. It's going to be a little bit different if you're working in Photoshop, but I'll mention the differences here in a second. Right now we're still doing the same thing. So go into Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. You're going to have to decide what works best with your photo. As I said, I wanted to keep it subtle, so I'm using about 11. I had experimented here earlier. If I turn the preview on and off and you look at the corner of this picture, that's really where I was trying to look at for my focus here. So that's fine with me. Now, if you are using Photoshop, you can just add a quick mask directly to this blurred layer. We're using elements here, so I'm going to need to do an extra step to get a mask. And I'm going to go ahead and click on my background layer because I want to add it above the background layer. Choose one of these adjustment layers because these all have a layer mask associated with them. I'll just choose levels. It doesn't really matter which one because I'm not going to make any changes. I'm going to click OK. I just want this mask and I want to group this layer with this mask. So the next step is to click on your blurred photo layer and choose Control or Command plus G and do that and now you'll see the little grouping arrow down here which means this mask is associated with this. I can prove that because I'll just click on this layer mask here and invert it really fast. It'll turn to black and you'll see the picture will come in focus here. See it's back in focus because this mask is now basically saying ignore this layer, show this layer below it. If I invert it again, now it's saying okay let's just look at what's on this layer because white will show what's on this layer and black lets the layer below it show through. So we want to actually add some black to this mask to, as I say, let the layer, the in-focus layer, show through. I'm going to um, start with a gradient, actually. And the gradient tool here in Elements is right here. If you're using Photoshop, I believe it's buried with the Paint Bucket tool. I hope I'm right about that. S which means, just like you see, this brush tool has a little arrow in the corner. If you hold down on it, you'll see the rest of the tools in that set. You may have to do that in Photoshop. I'm, I'm quite sure that the gradient is paired with something else, and I think it's a paint bucket. So click on that. We'll need a gradient that goes from black to white. In the default ones here of Elements, it's the very first one, because we're going to work with black and white. Black will let this, this uh, focus layer show through, so I want more of black down in here than I do in this corner. I'm going to draw sort of out like that, I guess. And now look at the mask. It's put a lot more black in the diagonal sort of here. Then definitely this corner of this shot is in focus now, and this is not. So the last step is I'm just going to put some more black down on this layer to get my daughter more in focus. And I'm going to do that by choosing a paintbrush here. I've got a soft edge brush, which means you're looking for some blur around the edges. This is, again, I think a default set. This thumb stroke, uh, thumbnail stroke rather, is from a Wacom tablet, so yours might not be doing this little curvy thing. But I've got a pretty good size brush here. Uh, it says a thousand pixels actually, so I'm working pretty big brush here. Just make sure you're working on that layer mask again and start painting, and you'll see now that the other side of my daughter is in focus. This fence can all be in focus in here because it's pretty close to the camera, and down in here I'd say is pretty good in terms of being in focus. I can be a little bit general. And because I'm using the blurred edge, it will stay kind of subtle, the transition between the two. Now you look at that, and it doesn't look tremendously different from what we had, which, as I said, subtlety is key. I'm going to go for subtle. 
but if I sort of give you the before look here and you pay attention to this corner especially and in here you'll notice that it does blur up a bit more there's after again just look at that top corner again this is really subtle you might want to go a little bit stronger than that and did I even get all of my daughter's face here and yeah I did just good idea to check that but I didn't want to go you know whole hog and make it super blurry it's just enough to make it look a little bit better and you know a little bit more what I was going for just to get a, some more emphasis on her and less on this background hopefully I'm CB and thanks for watching